Greetings and welcome. I'm Brian Posey, and in this video, I want to show you how to use PowerShell to track group policy drift. So let's go ahead and get started. As you can see, I've got an elevated PowerShell window open, and what I'm going to do is to create a report file that shows the current state of our group policy. Now, there are any number of different ways that we could do this. We could track individual group policy objects. We could track the resultant set of policy. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to use the default domain policy. So the command that I'm going to use is git gpo report. And so from there, we have to provide the name of the group policy object that we want to report on. As I mentioned, I'm going to use the default domain policy, so I'm going to type dash name, and then in quotation marks, default domain policy. Next, we have to tell PowerShell what type of report we want to create. I'm going to create an XML-based report, so I'll type dash report type XML, Next, we have to provide the path where the report is going to be stored, and we have to provide PowerShell with a file name. So I'm going to type dash path, and then in quotation marks, I need to enter the path and file name. I'm going to use c colon slash data slash before dot XML. Now, you could call the file anything that you want. The reason why I'm using the name before.xml is that for the purposes of this video, I'm going to create a baseline report, which is the one that I'm about to create right now, and then I'm going to make a change to the group policy object, and then I'm going to create another report, and then we'll compare the two. So I'm going to go ahead and press Enter, and it'll take just a second to create the report, and it looks like the report has been created. And if you're curious what that report looks like, I'm already in the data folder, so I'm just going to type type and then before.xml. And you can see the contents of the file. So this file is in JSON format, and if I scroll up, you can see all the various items that exist within that file. So I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to modify the group policy object. So I'm going to switch over to the group policy management editor, and I'm going to modify the do not allow encryption on all NTFS volume setting. And the reason why I'm choosing this particular setting out of all of the various group policy settings is simply because it's not going to be disruptive to anything that I'm about to show you. In the real world, of course, you would track whatever group policy settings are applicable to your own environment. So I've already created a file that shows my baseline group policy settings. And so now I'm going to come in and I'm going to modify this group policy setting as a way of simulating policy drift. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on the setting. And then I'm going to enable this and click OK. And so the group policy setting has been enabled. I'll go ahead and close this out. And so the next thing that I need to do is to update the machine so that it has the latest group policy information. And the way that I'm going to do that is to type GP update. That's short for a group policy update and then slash force. And that's going to update the machine's group policy information. And this can take just a moment to complete. One more thing that I want to do before I move on is to make the report file that we've created read only. Because remember, this file is going to act as our baseline. Anytime that we suspect that group policy drift may have occurred, we want to be able to refer back to this file. So we don't want that file being accidentally modified or erased. So if we want to flag this file as read-only, we can rely on an old DOS command called a trib. So the command is a trib, and then whatever the file name is, in this case the file is called before.xml, And then we type plus R. The plus R adds the read-only attribute. I'll go ahead and press enter. And there's no visible output, but if I were to type a trib and then the file name without any kind of attributes specified, we can see that the read-only attribute has been applied. And if we wanted to put that to the test, I could even try erasing the file.
and I get an error message. And the reason for that is because the file is read only. Incidentally, if you wanted to make the file to where it's not read only sometime in the future, what you would do is you would type the same command as before, only you would change the plus R to a minus R. And so now the read only attribute is gone. But for right now, I'm going to go ahead and put the read only attribute back. And again, this is not a required step. It's simply there as a means of protecting yourself. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen. And so the next thing that I want to do is I want to create another report because remember, we made that change to the group policy settings. So what I want to do now is capture the current state of our group policy. And to do that, I'm going to use the exact same command that we used before. The only difference is that instead of calling this file before.xml, I'm going to call it after.xml. And I'll press enter. And so now the file has been created. And if we take a look at the contents of this folder, we can see that we now have a before and an after XML file. And you'll even notice that the file sizes are a little bit different from one another. And so the last step in the process is to compare these two files to one another to find out if group policy drift has indeed occurred. And if it has occurred, what has changed? So to do that, we can use a PowerShell commandlet called compare object. I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen. And I'm going to enter the compare-object commandlet. Then we have to tell PowerShell what we want to use as a reference object. Now remember, we created that before.xml file as a baseline reference file. So we'll use that as our reference object. So I'm going to type dash reference object. And then I'm going to type open parentheses, get content, dash path, and then the path and file name to our reference file, which is c colon slash data slash before dot XML. And close parentheses. Then I have to do the exact same thing for our difference object. The difference object is going to be the after.xml file that we created a moment ago. So I'll type dash difference object. And then open parentheses, get content, dash path, c colon slash data slash after.xml. and then close parentheses. And then I'm going to use the pipe symbol and then type select object. And there are two particular objects that I want to look at. I want to look at the input object and the side indicator. The side indicator is a mechanism that tells us which file is different. So I'm going to type input object and then side indicator. And I'll press enter. And here we see our output. Now, in this particular case, the side indicator is suppressed. And the reason for that is because only one file had any changes in it. If, on the other hand, both the reference object and the difference object contain changes, then the side indicator would tell us which change belonged to which file. In this case, there was only one change. So the only thing that we see listed is the input object. So let's take a look at what we've got here. Beneath the input object, we have the modified time. So we can see when the changes occurred. You can also see the read time and the version of the directory. But then when we scroll down just a little bit, here things start to get interesting. So here we have a policy change, which you can see that I've just highlighted. So the name of the policy is do not allow encryption on all NTFS volumes. 
you can see next that that particular policy is now enabled, whereas it wasn't before. We also have an explanation of the policy. So right here you can see encryption can add to the processing overhead of file system operations, enabling the setting will prevent access to and the creation of encrypted files. You can see that this particular policy setting is supported on Windows Server 2008 R2 or Windows 7 and higher. And then you can even see the category. So you can see that this particular setting is found under System, File System, NTFS. So we have all of this information regarding which policy setting was modified and when. And we did every bit of that from PowerShell. So that's how you can use PowerShell to track group policy drift. I'm Brian Posey. Thanks for watching.